All right, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God for your presence. Uh, <clears throat> grateful for this opportunity to come together and to share together one with another this fine Wednesday morning. Thank you for each and every one of you that join us from far and from near. We are certainly grateful for your presence and for your commitment to gathering together one with another. Our last prayer call devotional was on Colossians chapter 3 um, and verse 13. Today, I want to move on to the next verse of that same chapter, verse 14. So Colossians 3, verse 14 says, And above all this, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Another translation says, And regardless of what else you put on, Wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. I wonder how many folks on the line this morning can remember a television show by the name of Cheers. Some of the characters were Sam and Norm, Diane and Carla, Woody, Rebecca, Cliff, and Dr. Frazier. These characters frequently went to a bar in Boston every day, talking about their problems, laughing at one another's flaws, and being there for one another during times of need. For 11 seasons, from 1982 to 1993, Cheers was one of the highest rated shows on television. Following Cheers, one of the most uh, successful spinoffs of all time was Frasier, which also had consistently been at the top of the ratings for the next 10 years. When reflecting on the success of these shows, the question arises, what is it that accounted for their popularity? I know that inspired writing and witty storylines played some part. I know that well-drawn characters and talented actors also played some part. But I believe that there was something else that they possessed that drew people to the television screen week after week. I believe that these shows and others like them tapped into a deep human longing for community. Community is defined as a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. It's a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, common interests, and common goals. And I just believe that at the end of the day, everybody wants to be a part of and connected in community with others. Everybody wants to belong to something. Everybody wants to be associated with something. Everybody wants to be around people who care about each other, who accept one another, despite their many failings, frailties, and faults. People want to be associated with folks who share an emotional bond with them. People just want somebody that can cry with them and laugh with them, fight with them, celebrate with them. People desire to be committed to one another in a real sense. Nobody wants to just hear those catchy church phrases that people always say, I'm praying for you, when in reality, they probably aren't. Let's touch and agree when they really don't know what that means. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not. God will make it all right. I'll be praying for you and keep you in my prayers. You've got my number. I'm just a phone call away. You see, although those things sound good, and are good things to say. The reality is that most people never really follow through with any of those things. And at the end of the day, because of the lack of real community, many of us don't really feel connected to or close enough to people to trust them enough to share our lives and bear our souls to them. If we could be real this morning, um, there are probably very few people, if any at all, other than family members or close friends that we've known practically most of our lives, that we would be comfortable enough with to share some of the real issues 
that we face or are facing in our lives. Very few people that we are secure enough with to share personal details without feeling like we're being judged or that our business will be put out in the street. The truth is that many people would like to come seeking a place of refuge, seeking a place of solace, seeking a confidant, seeking somewhere or someplace or even someone that they can escape to uh, and share the daily pressures of life with. Many people are living in quiet desperation with no place to go and no one to turn to. Many are on the verge of giving up or giving in. Many don't know which way to turn. Many are stuck between a rock and a hard place, and they don't know who they can turn to. And at the end of the day, people long to be a part of a greater community, a bigger family where they don't have to worry about uh, being judged and cast down and talked about. They're looking for people who will be real with them and be open and honest with them and be sincerely concerned about their well-being. I think the, the theme song to Cheers said it best. Listen to the words. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Isn't that what we all want? Isn't that why we get on the prayer line and we call each other's name and we know who's on the line and we get excited about who is joining with us and who is connecting with us, who is praying with us, who is uh, studying with us? people who care about us, people who are glad when uh, we get together, people who will support us and stand with us in good times and bad, people who will accept us uh, without criticizing and ostracizing us, people we can just be ourselves around. Don't we want everybody to know our names? Not everybody knowing our business or everybody just being plain nosy, but we would like to be in a place and around some people where we can feel comfortable enough to talk to somebody and feel loved by everybody. Something as simple as calling in on this prayer line and people recognizing our voices and getting excited um, and being able to greet one another and share with one another and love on one another. We can feel the warmth of a smile even though we can't necessarily see people's faces. We can sense the real concern of people and the overall general expressions of people, people saying that they've been thinking about us and praying for us and knowing that they really mean it. I'm sure we all desire to have that real connection, that real community, that real camaraderie. Well, I've got good news and bad news this morning. Uh, the bad news is that Cheers and all the other TV versions of community are pretend. <laughs> they exist only on a Hollywood stage, and the characters are only acting out their roles. People love those kind of shows. They're tuned in every week by the millions. They watch them now in syndication and on demand because aside from its entertainment value, people really want to be a part of that kind of community. They see something in those characters and in those relationships with one another that they want, but unfortunately, it's on the TV screen and not real. The good news, however, is that it can be real. Because there is a real place that exists that should be exemplifying that kind of community. That place is called the church. The church, uh, sisters and brothers, is not in the building, but the church is in us. The church is not a facility, but we the people are the church. The church ought to provide for us an experience of being around a group of people who will sincerely be there for us through whatever we're going through. 
the church ought to be where we can experience the love of God and the love of our sisters and brothers. The church ought to be where we can conquer any obstacle, solve any problem, because the love that we share one for another allows us to be mutually committed to the success of the whole. People should never feel like they can get more love outside of the church. There should be so much love exuding from the people of God that no outside love can compare. The people of the church are supposed to be those who exhibit community, those who exercise loving, caring, sharing, and giving, those who are praying together, breaking bread together, learning together, those who Jesus Christ referred to when he said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When we look at our text for consideration this morning, Paul says in the letter, and above all these put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Paul gives a list of things that the church ought to possess so that real community can be expressed. He says that we must be holy. We must be kind. We must have a humble disposition. We must have meekness. We must be able to deal with long suffering. We must be able to bear with one another and forgive one another as Christ forgave us. And then he says in verse 14, and above all of these things, we need to put on love. We need to become the kind of people who are unified in our love for one another and in our love for Christ. People who show our love for one another by the way that we relate to one another, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week. We need to become the kind of community where folks who are discouraged and heartbroken can find strength and healing, where folks who are confused can find help and guidance, where folks who are weighed down with sin can find forgiveness and relief. We need to become the kind of community where lives are radically changed by the love of God flowing through the people of God in our relationships with one another. And as we become more and more that kind of church, that kind of community of people, the world will take notice and desire to have what we have. And eventually, what we'll be able to tell them is that what we have isn't a what at all. It's not a philosophy. It's not a religious dogma. It's not a program of self-improvement. It's not a what. It's a who. And the who that we have is Jesus Christ living in us, working through us. The Bible says a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another by this. All men and women will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The Bible says, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as I have loved you. The most powerful argument for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not the sophistication of our mission statement. It's not the historical evidence for the fact of the resurrection. The most powerful argument for the truth of the gospel is not our good works or even our changed lives. The most powerful argument for the truth of the gospel is our love for one another. That's what Jesus said would distinguish us among all the people on the earth as his disciples, our love for one another, love that excites us to do the work of the Lord, love that expects us to meet the needs of others, love that empowers us to look beyond faults and meet needs, Love that equips us to forgive those who have wronged us. Love that emboldens us to move past our past and into a brighter future. Love that encourages us to uh, gather however we can, whenever we can, wherever we can. Love is what helps us not to be weary in well-doing, but to keep pressing on when it feels like we ought to be stopping. Love is what undergirds everything else we say. And without it, nothing else that we say matters. The mission of the church is to produce people who love God 
and who love one another. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority uh, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. <clears throat> That's the kind of church we're expected to be. When we become that kind of church, the angels will rejoice. When we become that kind of church, the world will be the path to our door trying to get what we have. When we become that kind of church, God will be pleased. And if we don't become that kind of church, then nothing else really matters. I'm done. Above all these things, put on love. Love and emotion of a strong affection, personal attachment. Love, the unselfish loyalty and benevolent concern for the uh, good of others. Love, the compassionate and affectionate actions expressed one to another. Love, a minimum of emotion and a maximum of meeting the need even when we don't feel like it. Love, not doing necessarily what someone desires, but doing what is needed. Love in this text is that unconditional, unwavering, unchanging, unselfish, uncommon concern that comes from God and is expressed through us. Above everything else, there ought to be love, the real kind of love that's only experienced from a believer because only a believer understands what real love is. If the church is going to experience any real sense of community, it must exhibit a real sense of love. If there's no love, then there can be no real community because according to the text, Love is the chief thing that binds our community together. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. That word perfectness can be interchanged with the word completeness. And above all these things, put on love, which binds us together completely. Love is the piece of the puzzle that makes the puzzle complete. Love is the glue that helps to make us complete. Love is the thing that binds us all together. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that bears just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, no, not just for some, but for everyone. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. God, we're grateful for this day, and we thank you for this opportunity for us to come together and to share together one with another. We thank you, God, because you have been good to us. In fact, Lord, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. Thank you, God, for another opportunity that you've allowed us to come to gather together, even in this virtual type setting. Lord, where we can share together, where we can love together, where we can pray together, where we can stay together. God, I pray even now before we move any further that if there's anything that's not like you, God, any sin that may have been committed, God, anything that we uh, have left undone, anything, God, that will prevent us from having our prayers uh, into your throne room, we pray that you remove it now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, touch us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, we pray in Jesus' name. God, we come this morning, God, thanking you for your word that teaches us that we, we the church, we, the people of God, we, the ecclesia, we, the folks that you have called uh, on and called out so that we can do a, a work for you have been called to love, Lord. Love, uh, above all of the other virtues that we should uh, possess, God, we realize that love is that uh, binding agent, that glue, that love. Love is the thing that makes everything perfect and complete. So, God, I pray even now for each and every person under the sound of my voice this morning that you will touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, remind us that it's the love, love that we have for you, love that we learned from you, love that we uh, connect with, one with another, that is going to uh, make us complete and perfect, God. Thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus for what you have done, and God, thank you for what you're in the midst of doing in each of our lives. 
Help us to love, God. Help us to show love, God. Help us not just to speak it. Help us not just to talk it, God, but help us to show love. Remind us, God, that our actions speak louder than our words, God, and that we ought to be a people that are doers and not just hearers only. So, God, I pray even now that you will continue uh, to build up your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue, God, to encourage our hearts. Continue, God, to give us all that we need that we might be the agents of change in a dying world. Lord, you know all about what's going on. We, we, don't, we don't have to uh, come complaining to you about all the issues that are coming, that are going on, but, God, you know all about it already. And so, God, we pray that you will use us as agents of love. Use us uh, as people of love. Help us to wage peace, God. Help us to uh, share um, in this love that you shared with us that was so powerful that it changed our lives, and we know it still has power to change others' lives. So thank you, God, for what you have done. Thank you for this opportunity, God, that you give us every Wednesday morning, every Sunday morning to come together and express the love that we have for one another. Thank you, God, for what you have done and for what you continue to do. And, God, we look forward to all that you will do to bless us in the future. We thank you, God, for what you have done, and we look forward to God, look forward, God, to what you will do. So touch now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, if there's sickness among us, we pray even now, Lord, that you will touch bodies in Jesus' name. If there's confusion among us, God, we pray that you will regulate minds in Jesus' name. God, if there are people in the valley of indecision, God, we pray, God, that you will give the guidance that is needed in Jesus' name. God, we pray that if there's something, God, that uh, people are going through that they can't quite put their hands on, that you will touch them at their point of need in Jesus' name. And then, God, help us to be uh, the kind of people, God, who can express love, God, to help somebody along the way, to pick somebody up along the way, to give an encouraging word along the way, to pray for God and to be, uh, be there for people along the way so that they understand, God, that they are not alone. Not only can they depend on you, God, to be there, but they can depend on us too. So, God, we thank you. We thank you for how you have blessed us and all that you do to continue to bless us. And, God, I pray even now that as you have shared and poured into us about what love is and what love does, that we then can uh, uh, share this love with a dying world. Help us, God, to be the catalyst of change that is needed even in this, uh, this day that we live in. So, God, we, we pray that as we move forward in this day, as we move from this moment of devotion and prayer to our daily uh, activities, that you will bless our going out and our coming in. Bless us, God, uh, in the fields and in the hills, in the country and in the city. Bless us as we come and bless us as we go. And, God, we will give you glory. We'll give you praise and we'll give you honor for you alone are worthy. Keep us safe, I pray, in the hollow of your hand, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every heart that is in agreement with that prayer shout amen. 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 Amen.